Okay, welcome to today's lesson. I am Siamasaka Kirian Dennis. Today, again, we are going to look at uh, uh, the law of uh, universal gravitation. And I feel we, this lesson will be very interesting and uh, uh, you will grasp the required concepts. And here we go. Okay, as I stated earlier, I said that uh, today we are looking at uh, Newton's law of universal gravitation. It's very important to understand the effect of gravitation, how it came into effect. And so we know that uh, the law of universal gravitation uh, says that for every particle in the universe, there is a force of uh, attraction between the two particles. And this force is directly proportional to the product of their masses, as well as inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. In simple terms, what this means is that if you have two bodies, and these bodies are actually a distance apart. So the force uh, actually which would be exacted um, uh, on each of them will be proportional to the product of the two masses, as well as uh, to be inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So in other ways, what we are saying is that uh, force would be equal to universal gravitational constant multiplied by the two masses, uh, which I've shown here as the m, a small m, one mass and the, the other mass with a bigger mass, which is the capital M, and divided by the, the distance between them, which is the R squared. So um, actually the universal gravitational constant here is uh, this quantity, which is here, uh, which is uh, 6.674 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 11. And it has these uh, actual units, which are newtons, meter squared over actually squared kgs. And so uh, what is the universal gravitational constant? Well, the gravitational universal constant it actually rates the margins of the gravitational attractiveness between the two bodies uh, to their masses and the distance between them. Okay. And so um, the, the effects of the force on the distance uh, to Earth, for instance, if we, here, we actually from this formula, we have probably a, a, a small mass, which is uh, actually above a distance above the Earth and M is the Earth and the, the distance between that particle and uh, the Earth is actually R. So what it means is that uh, uh, the force decreases rapidly as the separation increases because of the square, because of the distance between the particles, which is squared. So this uh, force will decrease because this, this value becomes greater. It means that uh, the force will decrease. And uh, why we are saying it uh, decreases rapidly because of square. Imagine if this was uh, the distance between them was uh, five meters. It means that uh, uh, by being squared, it would be 25. Okay. So uh, that's what we mean here. And also, uh, if we have two particles, uh, regardless of the medium, uh, which is between them, actually the force will still exist. I think these are the basic concepts that uh, actually we need to know. They are very important because uh, uh, we should know that even when you are calculating the force here, uh, if for, example, for instance, the distance increases between the two particles, preferably, uh, well, doubling, it means that uh, actually also the force would actually 
uh, if this increases, then this one will decrease. They are inversely proportional. Okay. So we want now to drive the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, for example, we have the F here, and its radius is the, the RE here, and this is the mass of the F, which is capital M. And we have a board which is above uh, the F, and it is actually a distance uh, D, which is actually for this mass M, it's a distance D to the F. So what it means is that uh, uh, there will be a force of gravity for that particular particle, which is Mg, which is above the F. And as well, as we said, there is also an, a, a force which is, which is the same, which is existing between the two particles actually, between the two particles, which is given by G, M and capital M over R squared. So what this means is that here, this mass and this mass will cancel. And so uh, from here, we note that uh, actually the radius here is the distance from the, uh, the particle up to the center of the F. And so uh, that's why we've written here RE, which is the radius of the F, and adding D, which is the, the distance of the object, uh, which is above the F. Okay. And this one is squared. And so what it means that, as I indicated earlier, the mass here is going to cancel. And what we're going to remain with it, uh, acceleration due to gravity will be the inverse of uh, the constant, gravitation inverse of constant multiplied by, by the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth plus the distance from where the particle is or this is squared. And what it means here, we are saying actually the acceleration due to gravity uh, as D actually increases, it means that the, uh, the, the denominator here would increase and meaning that the acceleration due to gravity is going to actually decrease. Okay, so because these are inversely proportional, as we indicated. So, um, as I indicated earlier, so this mass and uh, this other mass will cancel out. And so, if we are to put the actual, vi actual values of uh, universal gravitational constant, which is given by 6.674 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 11. Again, multiplied by actually here would remain with only once this mass, the particle actually cancels out, we remain with the, the mass of the Earth, which is 5.98 multiplied by 10 to the power 24 kg. And then we divide by the radius of the Earth, which is 6.38 multiplied by 10 to the power 6, and all this is squared. And actually, that's why it gives us the value of g, which is the approximately 9.8 meters per square seconds. And so I thought uh, these basic concepts uh, on um, uh, the inverse of uh, the Newton's law of uh, gravitation would help us actually understand the uh, more complex problems when we do the calculations. And I hope this will be of use as we approach more complex problems. Because if we miss these concepts, even when we approach more complex problems in physics, in particular for this topic, it will be extremely difficult for us to proceed. And therefore, I request you that you, you actually subscribe to my YouTube so that you can receive more of these lessons. I thank you.